The decision to bring no charges in the Michael Brown case has reopened old wounds of mistrust between law enforcement and the black community. We'll talk with the head of the National Urban League, Mark Morial, in a moment. But first, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Mayor, I want to start with the federal investigation, the federal investigation of Officer Wilson and also of the Ferguson Police Department. Here's what President Obama had to say this week. The frustrations that we've seen are not just about a particular incident. They have deep roots in many communities of color uh, who have a sense that our laws are not always being enforced uniformly or fairly. Mayor, do you see any basis for either investigation by Attorney General Holder and his Justice Department? Having read the transcripts now of the grand jury, FBI interviews and all of that, and having been a prosecutor for 13 years, uh, I don't see how this case normally would even have been brought to a grand jury. This is the kind of case, had it not been, had the racial overtones and the uh, national publicity, where a prosecutor would have come to the conclusion that there's not enough evidence to present to the grand jury. There are seven witnesses who support the police officer's testimony. And when I was listening to the back and forth between the lawyers, what was left out is a key witness, an African-American witness, says that the officer was charged aggressively at the very end. So and was but, actually but if, surprised if I, at if, how fast. If I, if I may, sir, the question, though, is what do you think now of it going to the federal level and Attorney General Holder but, investigating? It's the same testimony. I mean, it's the same witnesses, the same testimony. The, uh, in other words, the Attorney General Holder is going to have to take a case in which a jury couldn't find probable cause to uh, indict. And he's going to have to try to find probable cause in front of a federal grand jury when there are seven African-American witnesses supporting the police officer's testimony. And the witnesses on the other side, not all, but almost all of them, have uh, impeachable testimony. In fact, a couple of them committed perjury, uh, saying he was shot in the back when he clearly wasn't. Uh, so it's a very, very... It's an impossible case to present to a grand jury. A federal grand jury, in my experience, having been in front of hundreds of them, would find no true bill here, just like this grand jury did. Uh, Mayor, just I want to read the tra nobody. Ma Mayor, if I can, nobody I wants to read these transcripts. Uh, okay, Mayor, let me let me move you on to the to the bigger issue, though, because I, I want you to look take a look at a poll that that we found. Seventy percent uh, of blacks say people in their community are treated less fairly than whites. In dealing with the police, only 37% of whites make the same complaint. Question, do you think that, that blacks have a legitimate complaint about racial discrimination by police in their communities? Yes, I do. I do believe that there, are, there is more interreaction and more unfair interreaction among police officers, uh, white and black, in the black community than in the white community. And I think some of that responsibility uh, is on the police department and on police departments to train their police officers better and to make their p uh, police departments much more diversified. But I think just as much, if not more, responsibility is on the black community to reduce the reason why the police officers are assigned in such large numbers to the black community. It's because blacks commit murder eight times more per capita than any other group in our society. And uh, when I assigned police officers with Commissioner Bratton and Commissioner Safer, we did it based on statistics. We didn't do it based on race. If there were a lot of murders in a community, we put a lot of police officers there. If I had put all my police officers on Park Avenue and none in Harlem, thousands and thousands more blacks would have been killed during the eight years that I was mayor. Mayor, we're, so we're, the police are there. Mayor, we're running out of time. I, I, I do want to ask you about a specific case in Cleveland uh, this week, and we're going to put the, the video up, and I'm sure you're familiar with the case. This was a 12-year-old boy uh, who was walking around waving what turned out to be an air pistol. Uh, police respond to a call, and an officer comes up and shoots him dead in two seconds. I, I, Mayor, I know it's one case, but it, does this give a sense of what the blacks com black uh, communities complain about, that police are on a hair trigger? Yeah, yeah. And, in their communities? Well, I mean, there's no question that individual cases uh, have uh, situations that are unjustified. But you've got to put it in proper co context. Why is it happening? Why is it happening more often in the black community? 
And doesn't it actually logically make sense that it's going to happen more often in the community where there is five, six, seven, eight, nine times more violence than in another community? So if you want to work on the problem, you've got to work on both sides. When the president talked about training, he talked about training the police. I'm all with him. Train the police and make them better. I tried hard. We have a diverse police department in New York. Uh, but you've got to work on the other side of it, too. This is not a one-sided story, and it is presented always as a one-sided story. No, well, well, that's, that why, that's, why we're unfair. that's why we're talking to you, sir. I've got one minute left, so I'm going to ask you to try to confine it to that. <laughs> uh, there are several reforms that critics of the police are talking about now, and I want to put them up on the screen and get your reaction to them. Please. Putting body cameras on police, having a police force that reflects the racial makeup of a community, ending broken window and stop and frisk what's called aggressive policing. Are those good ideas? Uh, yes, yes, and no. Uh, <laughs> simple. I, I have changed my mind on body cameras. At one time, I thought they were a mistake. Now I believe they are a very good idea because 90%, 95% of these situations, the police officers turn out to be justified. And had this police officer had a, had a body camera, we would not be having this discussion. But very briefly, in 30 if, if I can, witnesses. sir, in 30 seconds, what's wrong with, uh, with the one you said no to, which is the aggressive policing? Uh, aggressive policing, aggressive policing, stop and frisk means uh, searching for guns. It's the reason why New York City reduced crime by 65, 70 percent. If you're talking about massive stop and frisk, obviously that's wrong. But stop and frisk is... Uh, based on uh, a reasonable cause to believe somebody's committing a crime. It's in the Constitution. Every police department does it. If you overdo it, and some police departments have, then it is wrong. So maybe the answer to that is yes and no. All right. The first two questions, the answer is yes. Mayor Giuliani, we want to thank you so much for coming in and talking with us. Wish we had more time, sir. Thank you.